Welcome to the lesson on blood and the lymphatic system. In this lesson, we'll talk about the different components of blood, and we'll briefly talk about the lymphatic system, and we'll also show the flow of blood and the pathway through the heart that the blood takes. Let's go ahead and get started. Blood is uh, makes up five to six quarts let me rephrase that. The human body has five to six quarts of blood in it. That's almost a gallon and a half. It is comprised of, number one, plasma. Plasma is 55% of the blood by weight. It contains water, salts, glucose, amino acids, fatty acids, vitamins, minerals, and hormones. It also contains three important proteins. Albumin regulates osmotic balance. And you'll remember osmotic from osmosis, so that maintains water balance. Globulin is involved in a broad spectrum of immunity and clotting factors. So this is the liquid. Plasma is the liquid that makes up your blood. Number two are the urethrocytes. Urethrocytes are the fancy name for your red blood cells. You have about five million red blood cells per drop of blood. Red blood cells have no nucleus. They contain hemoglobin for transporting oxygen. A, dis a disorder of the urethrocytes is called anemia. This is low red blood cell count and, be con and can be connected to either iron or vitamin B12 deficiency. The other type of cells in your body are white blood cells, which technically are called leukocytes. You have about 7,000 leukocytes per drop of blood, but it can give rise to over 30,000 per drop of blood during an infection. Leukocytes are involved in the phagocytosis of bacteria and the production of antibiotics to fight invaders in your body. The disorder of leukocytes is called leukemia which is the name for bone marrow cancer. This results in the overproduction of poorly functioning leukocytes. It can be treated by chemotherapy and or bone marrow, uh, bone marrow replacement. The fourth component of your blood are called platelets. And you have about 30,000, I'm sorry, 300,000 platelets per drop of blood. They are involved in clotting, and this is how it works. A break in a blood vessel releases thromboplastin, which in initiates a series of reactions, including the clumping of platelets. This forms a temporary plug in the broken vessel. In the production of an insoluble protein called fibrin, which then forms the permanent clot. Platelets may contain anticoagulants such as heparin. Block some part of this process. There are organisms such as leeches and mosquitoes that have a natural anticoagulant in their saliva so that they can get the blood out of their host and prevent the spot where they're sucking from from clotting. Disorder of the platelets is called hemophilia. This is lack of a clotting factor, and the blood does not clot. You might recall from our genetics unit, this is a sex-linked genetic trait, and therefore is almost always found in males. Lastly, we have uh, the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is a system of ducts which returns fluid from the tissues back into the bloodstream. 
It is filtered first in the lymph nodes, removing dead or damaged cells and bacteria. More to come on the lymphatic system here in a little bit. All right, next, next let's take a look at the blood flow through the heart. My diagram here is color-coded. I would encourage you, if you want to do the same, to do that, or at least label it as red and blue. And of course, the red is going to represent the oxygenated blood flow, and the blue is going to represent the deoxygenated um, blood flow. All right, so it doesn't matter where we start. I'm going to start with the heart pumps deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle through the tricuspid valve and to the pulmonary arteries, which carry the deoxygenated blood to the lungs. From each lung, the blood becomes oxygenated and returns the blood back to the heart through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. Now, note, in our previous lesson in the circulatory system, any vessel that carried blood away from the heart is an artery, and a blood vessel that carries blood toward the heart is a vein. But you note, this, these two are the exception to the rule in that here you have a vein carrying oxygenated blood while here you have an artery carrying deoxygenated blood. And they stick with artery away from the heart, vein toward the heart, but this artery carries blood toward the lung where it becomes oxygenated and then returns it back to the heart into the left atrium. The blood then passes through the mitral valve into the left ventricle where the heart contracts and pushes the blood through the aortic valve into the aorta and to all parts of the body. These vessels up here will uh, carry the oxygenated blood to the heads and arms. This vessel continues down and carries blood to the trunk and legs. From the trunk and legs, the blood has now had its oxygen removed and is now deoxygenated and returns to the right atrium through the inferior vena cava. From the head and arms, the deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium through the superior vena cava and into the right atrium. From the right atrium, the deoxygenated blood re-enters into the right ventricle and when the heart contracts, again pushes through the tricuspid valve into the pulmonary arteries and to the lungs. And the process starts all over again. So that's how the four-chambered heart and the blood flows through the heart to carry oxygenated blood to your body's cells and deoxygenated blood back to your heart to be pushed back into the lungs to become oxygenated again. All right, that'll do it on our notes for the blood and lymphatic system. Let's take a look at this short video, which will expand on the concepts of the lymphatic system.